right, you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Sister Sip Podcast episode. I don't know what number. Is it 10? Ten? Ten. Well, really? Wow. It looks like I'm just going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room. I don't know if you can tell or not. If you're watching this If you're YouTube. watching it. Because it looks like I've been crying. I have been crying. I've been going through. <laughs> now mm. I'm just laughing to deal with this. But I've been going through a lot. And so I was just kind of like sharing it all with Keegan and Kinsley and... So that's why it looks like I've been crying because I have been crying. Yeah, I guess I just <laughs> will ask that you pray for Jayla. Um, if you think about it, like this week, this month, because she's been going through some really heavy, heavy things. So, yeah, I just thought we would put that out there. And But here we are. Here we are. I'm still here. <laughs> here uh, and by God's grace. <laughs> by God's grace. Uh. And I just think it's like sometimes it's good to see like when you like people on social media that you follow like none of our lives are perfect like we're all going through things and there's seasons that are like way worse than others and sometimes you're walking through like the hardest season of your life which is when you need to delete social media like me yeah (laughs) Uh, um but yes just so you know we do not have it all together yeah it's easy to think that a lot of times, especially when you're in the trenches and you look at other people's lives, you're like, wow, it must be so nice to have no struggles like them. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. We all go through things. And, <sighs> yeah, I really feel for anybody who's, yeah, really going through it right now. But, anyways, uh, th- this episode is going to be about, like, hosting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I uh, think it's, like, we just came back from like a really heavy conversation yes. that we had together and now it's like kind of jumping into this <laughs> which I, yeah i am really excited we're gonna kind of uh, talk about it like i almost drank my drink oh yeah drink my drink <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, like w- what it should look like or why we should do it from like a christian perspective the importance of bringing people into your home and also just like some fun like hosting ideas and tips like, especially now that it's summertime, kind of, like, some fun ideas to yeah. kind of... It's the perfect time to yes. host. Yeah. So, I guess, before we get into it, Jayla has made us a yummy-looking <laughs> drink. A yummy-looking drink. Yummy tasting. We shall see. It's like a... It's going to be like a stra- kind of like a strawberry Italian soda. But the thing is, the syrup... I kind of made the syrup different than I normally do. And so, it's a lot thicker. Yeah. But it could still be really good. <laughs> so it's basically like sparkling water. I mean, a strawberry simple syrup and then put a little bit of heavy cream on I mean, that top. Sounds amazing. Sounds foolproof. Let's the strawberries try. were a little overripe, though. So could be a little Could be a little rancid. Sweet. <laughs> could be a little rancid <laughs> tasty. Oh, my uh, goodness. Okay. Yum. That's that really, really good. good. Okay, you guys need to check out the recipe we'll mm. probably be posting it we usually post the recipe kind of tastes like a strawberry ice cream drink I but like know. not near sweet not as sweet it's like refreshing we always post these recipes it seems like it, we tend to post them like the day after the episode yeah. drops sometimes the day of so keep your eye out be sure to follow us at the sis see i've been telling it wrong i think it's at sister sip podcast and i said it's just at sister sip oh let me double check this is kind of bad yeah, it's at Sister Sit Podcast, so we'll get it right this time. All right, go f- check us out there. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get into what's been brewing? Let's do it. Also, this whole episode, I have like a ton of notes for just written on my ne- my phone. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm feeling like kind of self-conscious. Like it's going to look like I'm just staring at my phone the whole time. But <laughs> our printer wasn't working, so I couldn't print it out. So I'm just kind of referencing referencing this which I always do on my phone I just feel like I'm going to be looking at my phone even more on this episode but anyways I feel like this month since recording last time has been like absolutely insane yeah I feel the same way like so much has happened I feel like we maybe slightly overcommitted our lives (laughs) (laughs) but it was all super fun things yeah you guys were gone a ton we were it was like a lot of like being out of town yeah right I think I recorded this the day before we left for Kansas or it was a couple days maybe before Mother's Day yeah we went out and surprised Keegan's mom pulled it off I wow it seems like so long it was I know wow I was like I can't believe that's all been since last time 
and I put a video on like our last little like photo dump and so if you want to see we we got her pretty good so that was super yeah. fun the next weekend we spontaneously went camping with That's our friends right. Kyrell and Sydney we so we went all the way to Tennessee which is like six hours away right after traveling 13 hours yeah. to Kansas which it was super fun yeah um but the next weekend was Memorial Day weekend and we had some out-of-state friends come and visit that was super fun but it was also like a crazy busy weekend yeah Next weekend was our garage sales. Oh, yes. Which was so fun. I had that in my life update <laughs> still. <laughs> we had a garage sale. It yeah. Was, we did like kind of like mostly women's clothing. Yeah. And it was so fun. I want to do it every year. Yeah. And I know. That was really fun. Like we just kind of sat out and like just hung out together. And yeah, it was literally such a blast. And then the next weekend we went to our general conference that our church does, which if you're not familiar with our church, we go to the Dunkard Brethren Church, and they have, like, different churches throughout the country, and then they all kind of meet together for a general conference or, like, annual meeting once yeah. a year, and we have, like, a lot of, like, worship services, and they also, like, discuss church things, like, any changes they want to make or whatever to our church, and I hadn't been in a couple yeah. years. It was super fun. The worship is always really good. Like the singing is I know. so good. I and know. I left feeling really refreshed. And yeah. like I got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen in a while. Yeah. So that was really fun. And then this past weekend, right after that, we went to Kansas again <sighs> because it was Keegan's niece's first birthday party. And now we're done. <laughs> Hopefully. For a while. Do you have any trips coming up? Not like Keegan's sister's getting married in August. Okay, so it's I'm like hoping a couple months away. Hoping we can kind of take the month off. Yeah, at least from like, like leaving our house. Yeah, like we really need to work on our yard, and it's just like Keegan has really struggles to not be in a routine. Like I've been kind of like this is so fun. I, w- I like I don't want to miss out on anything. Yes. I just want to yeah. like commit to everything. I feel like probably a lot of people can relate to like some are just feeling yeah. absolutely crazy. Yeah, but. Yeah, I'm kind of excited, though, to be home and be able to, like, work on things and, like, be with my friends. I feel like I haven't I know. I feel hung like we haven't hung out. I know. Like, even so just long. us talking, yeah. like, I literally feel like we yeah, haven't Yeah, I know. Out. And so, yeah, that's my little, what, what I've been update. up to. And the other thing is, is if you watch my vlogs, you already saw this, but I planted my first garden, which was so fun. I'm, like, every day I go out and look, and I'm, like... I know. To look at the growth. It's so fun to see things grow. Like, I just picked, um, have you got anything from your garden yet? I feel like not cherry really. tomatoes. I know, but I don't think they're, yeah, they're not quite ready. Oh, okay. I feel like my garden's a little late because I planted everything pretty okay. late. I got, I just picked yesterday a banana pepper. So I that saw. Was fun. I saw at your house, like, you could see your peppers coming yeah, in. Yeah, it's like jalapenos coming and another kind. So, yeah, I'm like, it's happy about that because I wasn't sure if I was getting enough sun or not, but everything's growing like nice and yeah thick. So, which I don't know if that's like so boring, but like yeah. for us, it's like it's like our first garden. I know everything is so exciting. I know I had a tiny one last year, but like I only grew yeah, like same. tomatoes and like not very much at all. And this yeah. one's like feels like more like the real deal, I guess. I know it's so fun, and I feel like I planted seeds and I like kind of didn't think anything would come up I know. it's like a lot of trusting the process and then I just to like see it come up it's I so know fun. especially like green beans yeah. I don't know it's been so satisfying I planted green beans and carrots but you can't really see the carrots I mean you can see the top yeah and then more I planted of a ro- lettuce which is fun to see like it's about ready to pick yeah um is that kind of most of your life updates yeah okay so ours were or mine is so I think I think I told you guys last time that we were going away for our anniversary and so <laughs> we went to, um, I can't think of the, we went to Lake Erie. It's like, I can't remember, like maybe three hours away. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, and we stayed on a super cute little Airbnb. It was Did so I show pretty. You pictures of it? I think you sent like our friends like a video of like yeah view. we were basically like staying over the water it was like a storage shed that they had turned into an airbnb but i was very impressed with how roomy it felt for being just a little storage shed like there had there was like a huge jacuzzi tub in it there was Fun. um probably just a double bed and then there was like a loft on top and a little kitchen like it felt like they like had utilized the space so good like 
for being such a tiny little area. It didn't feel that tiny, but it was fun because it was like hanging over the water. So like from like where our bedroom was, like it was kind of just like a one room situation where the bed was, you could like look out like sliding glass doors and like see the sunset and you could just like so go out the fun. doors and go on the dock and just like see the sunset and you were like right on the water. So that was super fun. Yeah. Um, it was like so pretty and we were only there for one night. It was just kind of a short little trip. Yeah. But yeah, it was fun to get away for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I also have the garage sale, which was really fun. Um, I don't think we've ever done a garage sale before, mm-hmm. but it was just fun hanging out with friends and selling yeah. clothes. We had some baked goods and coffee too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I made some baked goods. That was fun. Yeah. I you felt made, like, yeah. Like I made enough money to where it was like, I don't know. I was like, oh, I can like kind of go on a little shopping spree yes. myself. Yeah. Like it was like, and it was really fun. Like even if we weren't selling a lot of stuff, like we were doing it with friends. Like if I was doing it by myself, I would not like it. No. But doing it with friends is fun because you just like sit outside and chat the whole time. Yeah. You're just literally hanging out. And so if it's slow you're not like bored out yeah, of your mind. Yeah, I know. And then I was just going to share about a book <laughs> I listened to, which is really good. Um, it's called The Gospeller by Willie Robertson. I think it's a new book. Yeah, I think it is new. Like it probably just came out this spring. It's very good, very convicting. Um, very, yeah, definitely would recommend it. He shares a lot about like how it's everyone's responsibility to be a gospeller. And I liked that the book was written with a lot of biblical references the whole time throughout it. So, like, I took a lot of notes while listening to the book mm-hmm. of, like, different references that kind of, like, just, like, point to the gospel and stuff. Yeah. I just thought, yeah, it was really good. He's a very, um, they have a really interesting, neat story, the Robertsons. And, um, yeah, he's such a heart for, like, sharing the gospel and stuff. So, that was a really good book. Yeah. And Keegan and I started it yeah. on our trip, our just this yeah. past trip to Kansas, and we're, I think we're like a third of the way through, Yeah, and we're really enjoying it, too. Yeah, I think it's very, yeah, very good. It's like an, it's a pretty good listen, like an yeah. easy listen, but it's still like so much truth. Yes, definitely. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that book. And other than, <laughs> I don't really know if we want to get into this or not, I'll just like briefly share Because I feel like I'm pretty open when it comes to stuff I've been struggling with, especially like something like this has been so heavy. Um, It's something you can be praying about for me, but kind of like the past month and especially the past week, week and a half has been the worst, but I've been struggling a lot with just like anxiety and stuff, especially, and I know we just had a podcast episode on this, Mm -hmm. Um, but here I am again struggling with it and you know, sometimes that... It's just the way that life is, I guess. But um, I've just been struggling a lot with a heart for ministry because I do feel a big calling to that. But with that comes like a lot of spiritual oppression or has Mm -hmm. been that way for me. So and with that came a ton of anxiety with that. So this is like a very, very big spiritual battle that I'm going through. And um, so... Yeah, that's kind of what I was crying about <laughs> before we got yeah. started. But yeah, so that's something to be praying about for me. And it kind of feels like that's what my whole month has been about because it's like kind of all I can think about because it's been such a big thing in my life. But um, I know like each season I've been through, God has always carried me through. And like through each season, he like teaches me a lot of things. So, mm-hmm. but when you're in the midst of it, it's really, really hard, but. I'm very, very blessed to have, like, family and friends who I can talk to and who are there for me and, like, praying for me. I just have a very good community with all this. So, yeah, yeah, that kind of feels like my biggest life update because it feels like that's the only thing that I've, that's, like, really been on my mind. Like, even through all the updates I shared, like, through all those things, all those things I just shared, which wasn't very much, like, this was still on my mind really Mm -hmm. heavy. So yeah, yeah, I feel like it's been a big struggle when you're doing the work of the Lord and (laughs) like (laughs) listening to his call and being obedient, you're going to be attacked. And like we were just talking about it, like the devil, he has seen us our whole lives and he has seen our grandparents, our great grandparents, all of our ancestors and seen like, where our weakest points are yeah and where your weakest point is isn't like the same for me yeah we've talked about it I just think it is attributing a lot to the fact that you're being obedient to the call of the Holy Spirit 
but it is it is hard especially like when you're in it to see out yeah to see the light at the end of the tunnel but it's and like like, the one good thing about this whole season is like it's really pushed me to like um I guess be a gospeller (laughs) you know what it talks about in the book because I don't like this season has been so so hard but like it's really pushed me into different opportunities and stuff it's, that have been really good so like I feel like this season isn't for nothing I mean the Lord has been teaching me a lot but like also like I don't know if I would have had the strength or mindset to do some of the things and have some of the conversations that I have had if it wasn't for this season so I'm like at least like what I can look back to that and be like there was there is good that came out of this season but yeah mm-hmm. it's been very very spiritual and very heavy so And I, like, it's also been super inspiring for me, too. Um, Sometimes it's, like, easy just to, like, get into, like, the normal Christian life of just, you know, just kind of doing the day day to day and not really stretching yourself, like, at all. Yeah. I've been convicted a lot of a lot of things recently. Yeah. Especially with my prayer life. That's, like, a whole other thing. But, honestly, even, like, with everything happening with you, it's, like really been opening my heart a lot and has even strengthened my relationship with the Lord and like convicted me yeah. of some different areas of my life. And so like the Lord is working and the yeah. Lord's moving and yeah, <sighs> it's not easy <laughs> to be, yeah, to be kind of like attacked and to be going through what you're, what you're going through. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> On to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, so you just have to laugh through. Laugh so you don't cry. Laugh so you don't cry and yeah. laugh to, yeah. And maybe at some point we can have like an episode where we yeah. go more in depth, especially when you're a little bit more out of it. Cause yeah. I don't know. You even have some cool stories of like, yeah, different. which you mentioned one a while ago. I think it was on the episode where we spoke about anxiety. Oh, wow. Yeah. About how, like, you felt convicted to go talk to that girl. Yeah. And you've been having some other experiences like that. Yeah, definitely. So, and it's kind of, like, inspired me to want to, like, look out for, like, like, where can I go and, like, yeah. share my faith or pray with somebody. Yeah. It is really scary, but it gets me really excited. There's, like, so many simple ways, like... Even, like, my mother-in-law gave me some tracks, which I want to order some more, too. But just, like, having those around. And um, another friend of mine who I talked to gave me some, like, Bible verse cards that she had had in her purse. And for me to, like, keep around and carry around because it's, like, I could, I don't know, it's a good, like, you can even spread the gospel that way. But just, like, writing on the back of a card and, like, sticking it in someone's mailbox or, like, Mm -hmm. just sticking it somewhere and, like, Every day I've been struggling a lot lately and it was like my mother-in-law was at a store today and I don't know, it was just like encouraging. She said she was, she found like a track on like some stepping stones she was looking at at the store that said like invited them to their church and like talked about God or whatever like on mm-hmm. the track and she said like someone, she's like, I looked down and thought, saw this and thought of you. She's like, someone is out evangelizing and I don't know why like. I think it's because that really struck me and it just like, I don't know, kind of made my day a little bit because I think when you are going through the trenches and like, um, I was talking to my grandpa about this and stuff, it feels like you're the only one. Like (laughs) I feel a lot like I'm the only one out there who's like struggling with this or like I'm the only one out there to like save the whole world or whatever. But then you Mm -hmm. like look around and you see there's like a lot of people and like God's using a lot of different people and you're not like the only one he's using to like save the world. And so it's just like really encouraging to see like other Christians and stuff like um, doing different things to like spread the gospel and stuff. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And like once again, yeah, (laughs) I know I've like, it's not our responsibility to save the world, but it's, yeah. But it is absolutely every Christian's responsibility to be the hands and feet of Jesus yeah. in our everyday life. Yeah. Sometimes that does mean leaving everything that you've ever known and moving away to the mission, like a specific mission. Yeah. But sometimes it's just in your day-to-day life, in your job. Yeah. You know, when you go to the grocery store. Yeah. And... 
it's just definitely something to keep in mind like yeah. that's that's what you sign up for when you become a christian yeah. <laughs> and you sign up for being attacked by the devil which sounds really depressing. Yeah. But there's obviously so much joy and so much hope that comes out of having a relationship with the Lord. But there is that outweighs the um, heaviness of like spiritual attacks and stuff from the devil. But yeah, there is definitely a real part of having a relationship with God and stuff is like the devil obviously hates that. And I guess like it almost can strengthen your faith, too, because you're like, well, obviously... Like, this is real, because if this wasn't real, this was nothing, then I wouldn't be feeling like the devil wouldn't care. Like, I wouldn't be Mm -hmm. feeling the attacks from him. Like, obviously, this is real, because I'm getting so much um, oppression over it from the devil. This is kind of, like, on the other end of maybe, like, where I'm at. We listened to a sermon, Keegan and I. What was the sermon called? It was from, wait, what's the church called? (laughs) I don't even. (laughs) Harris Creek Baptist Church. (sighs) I don't remember what the sermon the sermon was about spiritual warfare winning the war i think something along those lines and the pastor is kind of talking about like going to other countries and seeing like when you see like people that are possessed with demons Mm -hmm. and like christians are constantly attacked and something he said that was like oh wow he was like but the devil doesn't need to send a demon to you. He already sent you Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. And, like, you are constantly distracted. Yeah. And that is me. Like, yeah. when I am, like, struggling, wow. I can immediately <laughs> go and sit on my phone <laughs> and forget all about it. And I'm, like, somebody who kind of can kind of ignore my problems. Yeah. I hate to hurt. It's yeah. Like, I've walked through being depressed. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we're already getting attacked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My camera just shut off because I ran out of memory storage. But yeah. We're not going to over-spiritualize everything. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was saying, I've like walked through depression before. Yeah. And I just, I think I'm like at a point where I like just try to like shut out any pain. Mm-hmm. And so, but sometimes like the Lord calls us to hard places. Yeah. And it's easy for me to try to distract myself. And I've just felt really convicted of that, of how much I I use my phone or other yeah. things as a distraction. Even, like, I came home over my lunch break. And I was, like, immediately, like, what am I going to watch? Oh, yeah. Like, I was immediately, like, none of these YouTube videos are, like, standing out to me. Yep. Or, like, you know. And then all of a sudden, I, like, just kind of felt convicted. I was, like, can you not just sit in silence or yes use this time as like quiet tr- time or prayer time yeah that's like, so true i spend every single lunch break like immediately get my food i have to have a video started yes i can't ever just be like sitting yes in like thinking and praying and yes. i think that's why my prayer life has kind of yeah went out the window a little bit yeah that's to where yeah like, I'm not praying throughout the day. It's like we constantly have to be stimulated by something other than our own thoughts. Because mm-hmm. then, like, when you start getting your own thoughts, it's kind of, like, it can kind of turn to be depressing sometimes. So, it's like you constantly have to be stimulated with something mm-hmm. else. That's very accurate. And when you, obviously, this generation has a lot of, like, attention yeah. span issues. And I think that comes into our prayer life. Because I've been trying to kind of do better about my prayer life like it's not like I stopped praying but it was just like a quick little prayer before devotionals maybe yeah you know before bed sometimes you know like little things but then um I just think back to other seasons where I was like praying so much throughout the day yeah and just talking to God about literally everything yeah. and now I'm like kind of trying to get back into yeah. that and it's like my brain is like wait like yeah I'm getting bored yeah and so I think part of that is like, let's remove some distractions. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like talking to a friend you don't know super well. Like, yes. You're not going to have a relationship with somebody who, you know, you just like say hi and yes. bye to. And I'm not saying that's what my relationship with God was like. But, but it's it like, can be that way sometimes. Yeah. And it wasn't Definitely. like as intimate as it has been in yeah. some past seasons. And another thing. Which I don't know if you really relate with this because I think it's been maybe, maybe you do. Yeah. It's like, I realize like I study so much 
this makes me sound way smarter than I am. I'm like not. Yeah. But, like I'm like sometimes more interested in like theology and like, you know, studying out like what, how God works, which is so great. And I'm not saying that's wrong because I believe that the Lord says to love him with all of our heart. What is it? All, all of our strength, all of our heart and all of our mind. And I think that that yeah. is being like thinking through and even wrestling through, you know, theology and things. Yeah. But when that comes, I think that so much I've seen this. I just feel like it comes into the place of the relationship is yeah. studying. And mm-hmm. you realize like you're just opening the book to like figure it all out and yeah know theology and get into the mind of God which yeah you never can but it's good to you know yeah. to strive to get to know him more and more but when you're just it, you also have to love him with your whole heart yeah so that's something I've been convicted yeah. of too and it seems like like with the season I'm in right now like I about can't listen to anything unless it's gospel music or a Christian podcast like it's an interesting like Anything that's not that, like, I'll, like I have to either be quiet in quietness or listen to those things. Because, mm-hmm. like, anything else is just, like, I don't even know, like, of this world. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Just, like, I'm just, like, some, like, dumb podcast. I, I don't mean that. Like, <laughs> but just, like, some mindless, entertaining podcast, entertaining songs. Like, I just can't do that right now because it just, like, kind of pushes me down deeper. Like, I need something uplifting if I am going to listen to anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this season has really, like, helped me cut out distractions. And, like, I had to delete Instagram, Facebook. And it wasn't, like, it wasn't even that, you know how sometimes, like, it's not like they're inherently bad things. Like, on Instagram, because of, like, what I was going through, I was getting so many, like, quotes, like, God quotes, like, biblical Mm -hmm. quotes that were good. But then, like, a lot of them were just, like, not saying they aren't good and helpful, but sometimes it's just like, it was like I had an overflow of like ministry quotes, this, that, like, it was honestly like not being very helpful at that point. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was like something good, but like when you start to like get your feed plugged up with that and you're like struggling with it really bad, like it's like you got to just cut all the distractions yeah. out and just go like straight to the word yeah, or straight to like, you know, talking to people mm-hmm. and like, I don't know, sometimes those are all good things, you know, the people that post quotes and like, you know their ideas and thoughts on like what you're going through if you know what I mean and like ministry inspiration but like for me in that season's like I had to just get rid of all of it and there's there are seasons like that too yeah it's not like you're like Instagram is terrible you should be deleting it because there might be that same quote maybe like yeah change somebody's day yeah they were really good things Mm -hmm. and like I have like a couple of them really like spoke to me but it was like I was getting almost like an overflow and I was like turning like when I was feeling really depressed and anxious like just turning to Instagram to see like those quotes and stuff Mm -hmm. if that makes sense like it was turning into something bad it obviously it was a good those are good things but yeah yeah, if that makes sense so anyway this is a very long talk about just this yeah I know I'm kind of glad that we got into it a little bit because I know it's been on your heart but I was also like I don't know if you want to share yeah share it because you're kind of like still in the trenches but I was also like I feel like I've had some things on my mind. Yeah. And sometimes it's good to like <laughs> kind of have like an outlet to talk about yes. it. And you guys get to yeah. be subjected to that. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. It's, I feel like it's like something I kind of like in my heart and mind. It's like this is a bad term, but like elephant in the room or whatever. Like it's mm-hmm. like kind of like the only thing that you guys know about it. Yeah. It's kind of like it's hard for me to even like focus on anything else except what I've been going through. Yeah. When so it's like so good, heavy on yeah, your heart. It's so like, it's like good to like talk about it and kind of like get it out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, are you ready to get into the Yeah. Topic? I don't have a lot of points just because I just, yeah, my head's not been in the right space. Yeah. But I have, I mean, obviously we're talking about hosting and oh my word, I don't have hardly anything at all. That's okay. I have hosting can be a great way to get to know new people <laughs> <laughs> and a few other tips, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll share what I have. Yeah. Not that I have a ton either, but this is something I feel like, you know, I've been thinking about and I know like Keegan has it on his heart a lot too, is like bring people into our home. I mean, I do too. And I feel like you've done a really good job at that. Oh, I feel like you've done a horrible job at that. <laughs> so thank you. I don't know. It feels like it's better than me. First, like why is bringing people into our homes important? And first of all, like I feel like it's even like you coming into my home tonight and even just having this conversation is yeah. creating community is 
essential for our Christian walk. And doing it in our home is like a way to pour out a little bit of yourself. Yeah. And serve the others around you. Romans twelve thirteen says to contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And oh, wow. that's what this is too, is like, there's the ministry of like going and saving the lost, yeah. which is so important. But another big aspect is walking alongside the fellow saints, yeah. especially like the ones that are struggling yeah, and just like building each other up. Even if you're not struggling, like we, we need community. I'm like, yes, definitely. We need to be encouraging, uplifting and serving one another in our Christian walks. Mm-hmm. And this is basically what the church is. And it's like, it's essential. Like, Community as a Christian, I don't think is like optional. No. Like you cannot do it alone. No. And, you know, there might be seasons of loneliness. And like if you don't feel like you have community, I know that's so hard. And I, a part of me feels like a little ignorant saying that because I have found community. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm not walking through. Yeah. A season of loneliness right now. But it's so important because... If you don't have people walking alongside you and encouraging you, yeah, like, your faith isn't going to be challenged, yeah. and yeah, you need you need people, <laughs> especially not to bring it back to me again, but like I have been like hyper aware of that mm-hmm. right now, like how much like community has blessed me right now, and like having like such like godly friends and like people at my church to talk to, and yeah, it's just like yeah, community is very very big. I also think like something we haven't did it yet but this I guess is just kind of a some hosting ideas I don't know if we want to get like into that yet or what our thoughts and stuff are on that but like there's so many yeah there's so many ways to use hosting as a ministry Mm -hmm. um especially like something that we haven't did it yet but like I've been talking to about with my sister-in-law and I know that's something her and her mom want to do but like having the widows over for like a tea party, like different things like that. There's a lot of people who like, or even a new family at your church or anyone new at your church, really. Like, I think it's kind of hard for people to feel like going to somewhere new or walking through a season of being alone, like widows and stuff. Like, I think it, like we will never know how much it means to them to like have someone invite them into their home Mm -hmm. and stuff and like talk to them. And another thing too, is like even your neighbors and stuff. It's kind of a scary thought sometimes like if you kind of build a relationship with them, like even inviting them into your home and like having conversations and stuff can be a really like good ministry outlet. Oh, for sure. And in Jesus's life, we saw him taking the lower position and serving a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm a social person. So that aspect of hosting comes naturally to me, like chatting with people and having them over, but serving people does not come naturally. This is something that I've been thinking about. I just wondered what your take is, but I also feel like you don't relate with this, but like you see like Mary and Martha and like Martha was so busy, like back in the kitchen, she wasn't even like sitting at the feet of Jesus like Mary was. And I'm like, can you be too much of a Mary? (laughs) <laughs> which is like <laughs> that's so us I feel like I'd be back in the kitchen like super busy and annoyed at you like not helping as you're yes. like, sitting at the feet of Jesus that's so interesting but, I never I mean, thought about that <laughs> obviously the people coming into my home aren't Jesus but like sometimes there has to be a balance because like you could be so busy like being in the background and serving and then like you're not taking time yeah. to like talk with them and like share your heart listen yeah. to their heart but I also think sometimes like you might always want to be like front and center and like having a good time. And sometimes like God's going to call me to maybe step away, even if I have FOMO and wash the dishes. I was just thinking (laughs) that washing the dishes. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. It's just something I've been thinking about. I'm like, can you be too much of a Mary? I don't know. (laughs) Where's a healthy balance between Mary and Martha? Yeah. That's interesting. I know. I love having people in our home, um, especially like our friend group because it seems so easy and chill and relaxed but I definitely would want to make a better be more intentional about like having other families from our church in our home yeah some of it seems like a little bit more awkward like and you have to it almost seems like you have to be a lot more put together than like versus just having your friends or family over but that is definitely something I want to work on because I think I don't know like there's so much community and stuff that you can build by having people in your home and like relationships that like I think sometimes I just don't really think about if that makes sense and those are like 
I guess like hosting and inviting people into your home is like a great way to start relationships. It is. Something I was thinking about is there's something like a little bit more intimate about having somebody into your home. Yeah. Especially new people. I don't know. Even my friends. It's like you're kind of like bringing them into a little piece of you. Yeah. It can be a little bit like what do they think of my house yeah. <laughs> or just like. You're, like, bringing them into your personal space. Yeah. So, it is something a little bit more special about inviting them to your house than even just, like, I'm not saying it's wrong to, like, go out for dinner. Yeah. But it's, like, another reason to, like, yeah, maybe have somebody over and share your space a little bit. Yeah. And, like, especially if we've been blessed. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you listening, too. Like, we've been blessed with our homes and stuff, like... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. So it's yeah. hard for me to get my thoughts up. Like if we've been blessed with our homes and everything, like it's a great way to give back and like share that blessing by having other people in and stuff. And I feel like for me, sometimes I do feel insecure. Like my house can be messy sometimes. We have to address it at least one time in the podcast. Yes. That I can she lives in such a messy house. I am <laughs> <No>. a slob. <laughs> A human tornado. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, my house isn't perfectly remodeled. Yeah. And it's not a big, gorgeous house. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my house. Yeah. But it's cute. There can always be like insecurities. But, yeah, I know. We can't let that get in the way. And we see like Jesus with his disciples, like some of his most intimate times with them were when he was breaking bread with them. Yeah. And like talking with them, whether they were like, I think they were like eating breakfast out by the sea after they caught fish and obviously the last supper yeah and like some of those more intimate conversations happened over a meal yeah so don't (laughs) don't underestimate the the power power of a good meal (laughs) the power of some good eating (laughs) Uh. and like you don't have to overstress like if it seems overwhelming to make a big meal, like usually whoever you're having over, like, like don't feel bad about asking them to help out. Like I don't feel like yes. you need to feel the pressure to like make everything. Like it like helps if you like if you're having a few people over, like kind of just dividing the meal up a little bit, like making the main dish. Like, yeah, I had that down. It's like, yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help. Obviously, be discerning. Like. Not they're like, can I help you? I can you make the meal? <laughs> like having a new mom over and be like, she's like, can I help for anything? Yeah, if you just go ahead and bring like the meat or something. <laughs> but I know um, you guys know that it's like be discerning. Yeah, but like don't feel bad to like feel like you need to like do it all. I guess don't feel bad to ask for help. I feel like most of the times whenever I'm hosting people, like I like like to split it up a little bit, and it makes it like so much less stressful. Yeah. So like. Have everyone bring a dish. Be like, especially like a lot of times people are like, can I bring anything? Yeah. And I feel like maybe sometimes you feel the pressure to like impress and yeah. be like make a big lavish meal. Yeah. And I guess if that's really what you want to do. And some people love to do that. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. Like I'll like do the main dish and then like if other people can bring like dessert or something, that's so helpful. Yeah. And... If that's going to, like, end up causing it to be, like, super stressful and then you don't want to host people anymore, then yeah, it might be a little bit of a roadblock. And it's it's kind of fun, like, when people, you're like, bring a dessert. It's, like, kind of fun to see, like, what they yeah. come up with. And yeah. you, like, get to see a little bit into, yeah. like, the kind of food they eat. <laughs> the kind of desserts they eat. <laughs> it's so interesting. It is. Like, cause sometimes they make something I would have, like, never thought I know. Make. Exactly. Also, I also had, like, this tip. Well, something in the summer is, like, grilling yeah so easy like yeah we did that the other night it was like it seems like it's like kind of gourmet mm-hmm. it almost feels like it but it's like really easy to do something grilled because usually it's something you can like prep ahead of time like if it's a meat you're marinating or like burgers you're patting up or something yeah. like doing a grilled food is so <laughs> yeah no that's so true and i think like that kind of goes along with like summertime being the perfect time to like kind of start hosting or like yeah if you aren't prone to, like, I know some of you guys are probably, like, natural hosts in this episode. Is yeah. it really a- applicable, possibly? Yeah. But if it's, like, a little out of your comfort zone, summertime is, like, a great time to start because, yeah, you can have, like, a little grill out. You could maybe set up some cornhole in the backyard. You know, like, if you don't know somebody super well, sometimes it's fun to bond over, like, a game. Obviously, you can do that in the winter, too. Like, eating outside. Have board games. Yeah. It's fun to, like, spend some time outside. It's, like, less pressure to, like, 
sometimes like if you know people are going to be in your home the whole time, it might feel a little bit more pressure to have your home be perfect. But if you know you're going to be like eating outside or something, it's like, yeah. I don't know, it's a little bit less pressure, it seems like. It's like yeah. we're going to be mostly outside anyway, so. Yeah. Summer is, it's like my favorite, I mean, it's the favorite time of the year, yeah. but it's like a great time to have yeah. people over. There's always like little activities you can do too. Yeah. Also, like my last tip, and I know this is like obvious, but... <laughs> it seems so lame saying it. <laughs> like all these, everyone already knows. Like, <laughs> have people bring a sign, <laughs> grill in the summer, but don't feel bad to use paper products. Yes, so I had that down too. Okay, <laughs> we kind of have all the same ideas down, probably for that. Like, it's just like paper products. You can get cute ones if you want to be cute, but like, yeah. they are so like sort of like the stress of having people over, knowing you have to do all the dishes, can like really yes. be a deterrent. Especially if you don't like to do the dishes, you want to be in on the fun. <laughs> yeah, just be like, just throw away your plate yes. at the end. Like, don't feel like it's like the cheap way out to use paper products. Absolutely not. Yeah, and that kind of goes along with like maybe it's like a busier season. Just like order in some pizza oh, or yeah. Like, like, it's more important that you're having community and having people over than, like, yeah. putting a lot of pressure on yourself and creating that, like, perfect yeah. environment. I do have some, like, little, like, fun little tips that I will read that I had yeah. written down. First of all, well, I already kind of said this, but your house doesn't have to be spotless. Yeah. If you have a little extra time to freshen up, that's great. And one thing is, maybe it's more from the perspective of a messier person, but sometimes going to somebody's house where it's, like, a little cluttered, it can be, like, almost refreshing. It's yes, like, definitely. Oh, this is lived in. Like, you guys are yeah. normal people, too. Yes. And so, like, you could be surprised. People might actually appreciate that it's not completely perfect and yeah. spotless. And I can also be a people pleaser and think I need a perfect house. Yeah. But And it's important to be a good steward of my home and... You know, there has to be a healthy balance. Of yeah. Course. Another thing is to do something simple like lighting a candle. Oh, yeah. It's like so easy, but it like makes it feel like you really like put in a little effort. I know. And made it makes it special. It so, yes, definitely. It's like I have like a candle in my bathroom, like on top of the toilet. Yeah, so names all light. Yeah. Like I, mom always did that. Like mom always had yeah, candles like I need to do better about it. It just makes it feel so cozy in your house yeah. or something. And it makes it feel like, oh, like, I don't know, you weren't not, <laughs> it's like you weren't just an afterthought. Like, oh, I kind of planned it. Yeah. And like I lit some candles. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like kind of special. I always, not like I always notice it, but I always kind of think yeah. about it. Like if I notice, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's kind of like sweet and cozy. Another idea is to have a theme. If, if you want to like make it a little bit more fun, like a girls party with like yes. a tea party, a picnic, a seasonal party. We've se- did in several, like a fall party, a Christmas. You could do like, those are so fun to do with friends. Yeah. Like a spring garden yeah. party, that sort of thing. But lastly, it's like, just do it. If your gift is like party planning, then you can decorate and go all out. Yeah. You know, go crazy. But if it's not, and that kind of stresses you out, like, just do it. Just get some paper products. Get a pizza. Yeah. It's more important, once again, that you're creating community, that you're inviting people, that you're serving them, than it is to, like, create this perfect environment and putting all this pressure on exactly. yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, super pretty and cute always. I mean, it's fun to do that, especially, yeah. like, with, like, we love to do that with our, like, close friends and, like, all bring something and, like, make a really fun party out of it. But... It's like, it doesn't have to be that way. And yeah, the most important thing is just like, don't let that hold you back, I guess is what right. I'm saying. Being like, oh, it's just like, eh, it's a lot of work to like make it super cute and stuff. Because like the community and just like getting together with people is by far the most important part of it. Yeah. Walking alongside people. And like, if it's somebody you don't know, like ask them about their lives and yeah, just really get to know their heart, their interests and yeah. all those things. And I wanted to end, which maybe you don't want to take part in this because you're already kind of doing this, but end with like a little bit of a challenge this month to get out of your comfort zone. And I don't know what that's going to look like to you. I'm still kind of like praying about it for myself. Um, But maybe it's inviting somebody over that you've never had into your home or even it might not really be hosting. It might be like asking somebody out for coffee Like, there might be somebody that's kind of been on your heart for a little bit. Or maybe there'll be, like, a stranger or something that you just really, like, you feel God putting it on your heart. Just 
pray about an opportunity to get out of your comfort zone this month. And I believe that God will give you one. Yeah. If you pray for one, he's going to give you yes. one. And so it's kind of the challenge for myself. I know that you've been challenging yourself <laughs> to this for the past month. And yeah. I also want to say, if you feel like God put something like on your heart and you want to like share it with us, I'd love to hear. I, yeah. It's so inspiring. Like it's inspiring to hear like some of your stories and some of my other friends' stories of like God laying something on their heart and like the ways that they've reached out to people. And it makes, it's like a butterfly effect. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Butterfly effect? Yeah. And so it's just really encouraging to hear. Yeah. Hear your story. So don't be afraid to reach out. Send yeah. us a We'd message. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, you can just like private message us if you want. And yeah. Yeah. It's so encouraging and fun to hear back. Yeah. We've heard like a couple like really sweet messages from people. Like sometimes I was telling Jayla like, if we have so much fun with it sometimes it just feels like we're just getting on here and like yapping yeah yeah away yeah and then like somebody would be like this like is like really encouraging or like my daughter listens to this and like, yeah people are looking up to you and I'm like like for one it's like oh wow like I need to be taking this seriously like yeah this platform yeah but also it's just encouraging to feel like okay like God has given us this opportunity yeah. to speak and we love it. It's like, yeah, we get to do something fun and do it yeah. for the Lord. And not every p- episode is going to be super serious. Yeah. You know, we we like to have fun. Yeah. But anyways, we love hearing from you. Definitely. It's very fun and encouraging. Yeah. So be sure, like I said, to follow our Instagram at Sister Sip Podcast. And that's where you can message us. And I'll have our like personal Instagrams down below. And I'm sure like if you feel like you resonated with something like Jayla said, or even if it was something I said, yeah, <laughs> like don't be afraid to yeah. you could even message her yeah. privately as well. So yes, we, like we say, we love to hear from you guys and we consider you kind of like part of our sister community here. Yes, definitely. So <laughs> with that being said, we will let you guys go and we will catch you guys next month. Bye. Bye.